What did Jesus do from the ages of 12 to 30? All that is written about the lost years in the Bible is, he grew with wisdom and favor and stature with man and with God. So at the age of 12, the last record finds him in the temple and his parents are frantic. They lost him and they come back and they say, where were you? And he says, don't you know I'd be about my father's business? And then nothing. And curiosity leads to clarity. And so at the age of 30, all of a sudden he comes back. He knows how to turn water into wine. He knows how to walk on water. He knows exactly who his soul family is. He knows exactly what his mission is. And then he starts preaching a new message. He goes directly into the church he grew up with in the synagogue. And this new message that he's preaching triggers the pastors that he grew up with, the religion he grew up with. The pastors are triggered by his new message so much so that they plot and scheme to kill him. So what was Jesus really doing from the ages of 12 to 30? So according to certain perspectives, his mother's uncle, Joseph of Arimathea, was wealthy and records show that he was actually traveling. Records show him in India, where he was learning from the great avatars. He was remembering who he was. He was raising his kundalini energy dimensions one through nine that lives at the bottom of the spine, remembering that he is multidimensional. And this is written about by, in the Yoga of Jesus by Yogananda. Other record books show him in Tibet, learning Tibetan Buddhism from the great masters and finding zero point. And when you find zero point, you can connect and communicate with all different 12 probable selves of yourself. He was remembering who his soul family was. He was remembering that he is the vine, we are the branches. And he was remembering and also he was there, he was meditating on top of the mountain with what he called the Father, consciousness, all that is. And he was remembering, Father, I pray that they might be one as we are one. And he was becoming one with the wind. He was becoming one with the water. He was rebalancing the elements, the the stardust from which he was made of. Therefore, he learned the alchemy of how to turn water into wine. He learned the oneness of the elements to rebalance them so he could walk on water. And then record books show him in Egypt, learning the eternal life wisdom from the 12th level avatar, J12. And this eternal life wisdom, the science of the 12 stranded DNA, the science of the inner Christ, the science that we are all one and eternal life is the birthright of the original celestial human being. And so he comes back now at the age of 30. He knows exactly who he is, what his mission is. He knows how to turn water into wine and he knows exactly what his purpose and his mission is. And he starts preaching a new message that the inner Christ is within you, that you don't need a middleman between you and between God. And this pisses off the church pastors of that time and it triggers them to the point where they plot and scheme to kill him. Well, modern day Christianity now sometimes is now preaching, oh, Jesus said, just be nice. No, he didn't. He also had a warrior. He went straight into the church, into the temple, the divine warrior. He had integrated his his archetypes, the fifth DNA strand, the divine warrior, the sacred king, the lover, all of these were integrated within him. And he calls them out by name, you brood of vipers, you hypocrites. And then he also says the words in red, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. And then there's also a verse where it says, Father, I pray that they might be one as we are one. So all these verses start making sense. He had experienced the oneness of all of consciousness and he was reactivating, remembering when he connected to his super conscious mind, the fourth, fifth and sixth stranded DNA that stores your purpose, your divine purpose. He had integrated and embodied that. Then he went on the path of self-actualization and the love that was emanating from his heart and from his mission affected the 12 people he was with so much so that today there's not one name on the planet that doesn't know the name of Jesus and that is the power of love the force, the cohesive power of the universe. And this was his true message. Love yourself, love one another. What you have done unto the least of them, 
you have done unto me. And there's also a verse where it says, the dead in Christ will rise first. When one soul comes in, it goes into different timelines. So I'm starting to meet people who are actually on the Christ timeline. As you start reactivating your DNA, your upper strain of DNA, there's a cellular memory that starts flooding in and you remember the body keeps the score. You start to remember who you are. We are free, we are free, we are free. And the harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. And the story of Jesus is just getting started.